Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we're gonna have fun. We are on location to a really big, extensive, transformative uh, landscape job that Creekside Nursery has been working on this project in some th shape or fashion for quite a while now. We are at um, Sweet Customer's house here in Gastonia. Jerry has been working with Miss Sandra for, oh gosh, well over a year kind of honing in exactly what she wants in her backyard. And then Andrew has been implementing it in the last, gosh, month or so. Big, big project. Really gonna see a big, huge transformation in this really well-established garden that Miss Sandra wanted a complete refresh and came to us for some help. So I thought we would come today and take a look at the nearly completed project. There is hopes that they will get it finished today it's <laughs> Jackson has been helping Andrew and he is right over here over my shoulder uh, loading up some mulch and he said we're getting it finished today so there you go you heard it from the man himself Mr. Jackson so he has been a great help to Andrew um, coming and being kind of his right hand where we are we are um on the driveway side of the home so this is the side of the house okay the front will be here um, they live in a really nice kind of established neighborhood here in gastonia main road down here you can see they have quite a steep driveway down so where we are obviously driveway side of the house i'm trying to give you a little bit of a reference point here and then the whole backyard um, really has been transformed. Like I said, this was a very well established home um, and the garden honestly was just, it was overgrown and um, they needed some help coming in here because they are in their later years and wanted to really transform this space, came to us and that is what the Creekside team has done. Everything that you're looking at is has been touched and is brand new. We will go through all of this. I'm trying to stay out of the way because obviously they are working uh, quite hard today. Uh, you can see Miss Sandra up there. She was pulling out some of her zinnias because uh, the freeze got them. Nice, really well enclosed, very private garden. Um, like I said, being in the established neighborhood area um, has given them lots of good um, privacy in here and it's nice and snug which is great as far as the garden uh, however it can be a bit of a challenge as far as the um, construction zone goes so what we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of walk you through this is actually my first time visiting uh, this garden and I've heard tons about it we've talked about it I've seen it in pictures but first time seeing my eyes with my own eyes and man it is looking great uh, okay reference point here for you they just had the sunroom installed so they had the sunroom built along with this patio um, kind of working at the same time that Andrew was here working so we did not do the sunroom and we did not do this pad this lovely little patio right here what we did do um, is all of the stonework the retaining wall because as you can see this is yard is quite on a slope right so the house sits down and the gardens are quote elevated behind it so we had to address that in some fashion originally they were using um, some railroad timbers so where we have the stone the railroad timbers were and it was a little bit of a tiered garden so there were different levels um, and so of course obviously we took those out because they were starting to rot they were had been here for a long time there were some um, timber steps kind of coming this way and just looks so nice. Andrew has done just an excellent job um, doing all of the stonework. And then you can see that the retaining wall continues around here behind this giant fig tree right here. And then they actually ran out of block. They have got to go grab another pallet. And I believe they have one or two more courses right here that they need to go up. So that is why this area is still unfinished and why you still see um, <laughs> good, old, good old red clay soil right here. Because what they're going to do is come in, you can see where they need to add some more block right here. And then this too will be mulched. 
they did leave obviously they did not come in here and take everything out they've got a nice pit of sporum right here you can see it's got that that flag on it you know hey leave me alone um, as with this i'm not sure what this is um, this established shrub as well now when Andrew came in here, um, a lot of the time originally was taking out some of the older, more um, mature plants that just needed to be cleaned out. Um, it was overgrown, just some maintenance had not been done on it as well throughout the years. So Miss Sandra wanted a nice, clean look, fresh look. And by taking out some of those big overgrown, like there was a crepe myrtle back here that was just overgrown, just things that were, had kind of expired their, their life here in the garden. And by taking those plants out, she got a lot more sun in her garden. So um, <laughs> if you have gardened uh, a lot in the shade, you know, it seems like we always want what we don't have, right? And there are a lot of plants that thrive really well in the sun. So it really opened up the possibilities by giving her um, some more sun in here. But she, um, obviously the whole beds are going to be, this whole back area is no grass. This will all be mulch. Um, even all the way up here to the fence. But we've got in here a whole collection. This is gonna be a little bit more shady as we come back to the fence. And it is, keep in mind, um, November. So in November, you will see that um, the leaves are falling and that these hardwoods uh, are leaving, losing their leaves. And so they're gonna um, be in a lot more shade in the heat of the summer. So the, up, up against the back, we have got some uh, Florida sunshines. Let's see if I can go up there. So we have got some beautiful Florida sunshines that will be nice and big, um, bright pop of color with your lower petalums. We have got um, then azaleas because as we move forward, we're going to get some more sun. So we've got some Perfecto Mundos. It looks like the uh, double purple, I want to say, either that or the double pink, not sure, I don't have the tag with me, um, but these great little azaleas from Proven Winners, they will max out in that three foot range, but you'll see, um, have a nice little ribbon of those all the way around, so they start here and then work their way back here to these ginormous camellias. I am very, very envious for these two camellias. Clearly, these are really mature camellias. Uh, they both are the same, Miss Sandra believes, um, but just magnificent, right? I mean, just classic, beautiful camellias covered in buds. I cannot imagine this thing when it is in all of its glory. So kind of, you know, working with the homeowner as to what it is that they want and then finding uh, the balance of what they want versus uh, <laughs> what is practical and what works the best because sometimes we have to, to talk to people and go well i know that you really want to leave this and but it is at the end of its life cycle and it's not healthy and it needs to go or in this case of these camellias are absolutely gorgeous and yes let's leave them and we will work the landscape out all the way around them um, and be really successful in doing that all right let me pop down here and i'm gonna we're gonna come up the steps and we're talking about the plants that are around the landscape of the, of the steps coming up the steps here we've got just keeping it simple right so on each side very symmetrical we've got sprinter boxwoods the fire chief arborvitaes and then another uh, boxwood right there keep in mind that the boxwoods are going to be two to four feet tall like you can maintain them at two to four feet tall and wide and then the fire chief will be in that three-ish foot tall and wide mark so right here uh, very quickly these are both fast growers they will fill in quite nicely here and just really bring some great evergreen color to this space of course, Miss Sandra, like most of us good, uh, lovely gardeners, do enjoy a good uh, hydrangea. So here we have um, a group of three, and these are all Incredibles. And the Incredibles will work really, really nicely here because they're going to get enough sun, but they're not going to be out in full, full sun 
24 7 right so they're going to get a break during the day from the hot summer afternoon sun and it will they will just give them a break and do really well i will say that this garden is not on irrigation so that is why we waited one reason specifically coming in later on in the season and putting this garden in uh, because <laughs> We thought, oh, well, it will be raining, you know, and they won't have to maintain it as much when the first installation. Little did we know, of course, that we were going to be in a drought, so there's that. Um, but getting them in, obviously, we have watered them in really, really well and trying to maintain them while we are still here. And then, of course, the mulch helps a lot. But these three Incredibles, man, they are going to be beautiful this summer, this coming summer, and just be great. Uh, coming down on the front side of each of the walls, Right here, you will see that we have got some um, daylilies right here. They are all the same. This is blood, sweat, and tears from Proven Winners. So it's a little bit of that kind of that reddish rose color, um, and it will just be gorgeous. Of course, it will complement the azaleas up there. They'll probably be blooming at different times, but still, that same kind of color scheme and color palette for sure. And then coming on around this side, that's what Jerry was working on when we came in is that Andrew brought the steps up here and then stopped. Jerry was kind of digging out a little bit right in here because there was a hump. So let's just go ahead and get that hump out. And then you can see putting the, um, the stepping stones, pavers through here um, that they can walk in through the garden. I'll have to double check with them, but I want to say maybe th this is going to be mulch up to this point where you can see the white line and then that's going to be grass again so that way we're just going to kind of keep this flow of the bed with the mulch up through here um, so this will all be tied in together but you then give them um, some nice sturdy steps right here to walk in and then next let's move on here to the back corner back here in this back corner um, I think this is the area that was really um, overgrown and really needed a lot of love. So they came in here and completely had to clean everything out because you will notice that um, there is some ivy, uh, whether it is in this yard or the next yard, you know, a lot of times right in these established neighborhoods, one neighbor planted ivy, you know, 30 years ago and now the whole neighborhood has ivy. So that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge to kind of keep that under control because it will just spread and kind of take over a lot of things. But this area is really fun. This is where there was a massive crepe myrtle in here. Um, by taking that out, it has opened it up a lot, but you still have these beautiful, there are oaks, there are like a beech tree, there are maples in here. and. You know, of course, living in a mature neighborhood like this is, you know, they're not all your trees, right? Those are not Miss Sandra's trees. They're her neighbors, but she reaps the benefit of the shade because of how, of course, the sun moves around. So this is going to be, um, it is going to be a sunny area, but yet on the same time, this whole backyard is going to get breaks throughout the day from um, lots and lots of sun. So let's talk about what is in this space. So we basically gave you a nice uh, 360 of this space. Um, let's start forwards and we'll work our way, um, start in the front and we'll work our way to the back um, as we go around. All right, throughout this area, we have got some Father Gillas. This is Legend of the Small. Somebody's being very noisy while I'm trying to film. It's a good thing he's cute. So yes, um, Father Gillis, Proven Winners. This is Legend of the Small. So these are going to be small ones. There, there's three. We've got some Euchras, Corbels here in the middle. So that's why we put them in the front. So they are nice and petite. This time next year, they're gonna give her a beautiful fall color. And of course, in the springtime, early, late winter, early spring, really fun little white flowers on them. Got distilliums. This is a Cinnamon Girl. And Cinnamon Girl is going to be um, a beautiful evergreen, right? So distilliums are evergreen. 
this is going to be let me come back over here I, I looked at the tag but I need to look at that yet again this is going to be only um, two to three tall but three to four wide distilliums are great if you've got deer pressure because they are deer resistant now that Missandra has that here, um, we love distilliums because they are very, very adaptable. They take up a lot of room so they can cover some good acreage in your garden um, because they are so nice and wide, but just a beautiful whole ribbon goes all the way back. So when you're looking at the whole garden, um, you're gonna have that beautiful evergreen of those distilliums all the way from her she shed and then it comes around and it's a little bit of a um, relaxed V shape that it comes in and just ties this whole bed together. Up against the fence, we've got some Brandywine Viburnums. These are going to be deciduous Viburnums. They do beautiful uh, berries. Well, first they start with white flowers. So this is where the old flowers were. And then in the fall, typically this time of year, those flowers will have turned into some berries and they will be blue and red, great for your wildlife. But brandy wines will get to be a nice height. So not that they're gonna be taller than the fence, but they're gonna get some good height to them. And then again, have those running um, through the back here. There's a total of four of them on this fence and then the hydrangeas in front are the beloved limelights so you can notice that the brandy wines and the limelights really are kind of window paned through here so when the limelights are blooming you're going to have beautiful ever like green structure behind it um, with some white flowers as well so bring it in give her those gorgeous hydrangeas nice good height on that um, and clearly this is going to be a sunnier area over here and then coming on down we're going to transition a little bit more to some shade because looking at and knowing this has been the good thing about being in this garden um, for quite a while as far as being able to study it is knowing how the sun hits because of the trees and where it does the afternoon like where's the morning sun where's the afternoon shade those kinds of things so you might be saying well jenny you've got a limelight hydrangea you know and then 20 feet away you've got hostas yes because of how these trees act it does change the sun so just knowing those areas what gets the hot afternoon sun and what's in shade so that's where you really have to be a student of your garden and study it and understand how your sun works because as a general rule i would never say you plant a limelight hydrangea and a hosta in the same flower bed in north carolina like where we live that is not going to work here because of the trees and how the sun hits through those trees it will work um, and so what we've got is that same uh, hosta all the way through this is i believe this is a stained glass which will be a really nice limey chartreuse let's go through here i think obviously we had you know that 25 degree night so that really kind of zapped them just a little bit but we still have a couple of leaves in here that you can kind of get the idea of the nice bright color to them and then we've got more hydrangeas because like i said miss sandra loves her hydrangeas rightly so back here we have a collection of five again they're going more stickish because of we've already had multiple nights of freezes this is the let's dance blue jangles and let's dance blue jangles is one of my favorites as far as the let's dance series beautiful it is ph dependent here because we have more acidic soil they will be in that blue family but just that typical traditional macrophylla hydrangea nice big hydrangea blooms on it and the let's dance blue jangles will transition from like different shades of blues and even have some like deep purples in there so it will just be stunning especially with the uh, high, the hostas in front of it remember also with your hostas if you have a sunnier area the brighter the hosta the more sun tolerant it is going to be the darker your hosta the deep deep greens and those kind of what we call blue hostas then they need more shade so this will get some sun obviously because we've got some different hydrangeas and because of the trees it's going to get a little bit more sun than say a traditional shade garden 
um, then you want to go with those brighter colors because it's going to be it's not going to scorch in the heat of the summer as we work our way back you're going to get some more uh, a little bit more of the shade brought in again the florida sunshines they're all right through there will be in that three-ish four-ish foot range bright chartreuse color and then on the back fence right here we have chindo viburnums Chindos, of course, are going to be fast growers, so it is not going to take long, and they're going to get some good height to them, roughly in that four-foot range, and they are evergreen, so we love that. And then no southern garden would be complete without a tea olive or a sweet osmanthus, and we have one back here in the back because this is the back corner. It will be probably the tallest thing here. I'm trying to find you a flower a cluster. This one already has quite a few on it right here. The tea olives, sweet osmanthus, sweet olive, depends on where you live as to what you call it. It's a great evergreen, more columnar shrub, small tree that in the fall, winter, early spring, puts on those little clusters of white flowers that has just the most intoxicating, delicious fragrance very like a orange honeysuckle jasmine fragrance love 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 this plant so it is a great addition to her garden and i just saw that her neighbors have a fantastic japanese maple right here so again because you know and she's got you've got camellias back there just because it's not on your property right doesn't mean that you can't enjoy it so really nice uh lace leaf Japanese maple right here looks great and here in the garden. Jerry is bringing in the mulch. Jackson and Andrew are in here slinging some mulch. And then as we come here in front of her she shed, Andrew went ahead and we've got some more of the Let's Dance hydrangeas in here, but these are gonna be different. These are the can -dos right here. Candus, of course, are going to be in that same type of macrophylla hydrangea family. And we've got five or six right in here. Really going to be nice. And they, the great thing, too, about the Let's Dance hydrangeas is they are more petite. They're not going to be um, like she has right here, which clearly is a very happy plant because it's covered in old blooms have no clue as to which hydrangea this is. But my point is, you see how tall it is? We're every bit of five feet on this guy. Um, and like I, to prove my point, you can see the blue in this hydrangea. And so that's what her, gonna be in that bluish family because we have so much um, acidic soil. But man, can you imagine cutting those and using them in an arrangement this time of year? Oh, stunning. But my point in saying that is that the Let's Dances are going to be more petite, shorter, and wider. So they're not going to cover her she shed. They're not going to block a view or anything like that. It'll be really a nice, nice, nice size on that as well. All right. So let me confer with the fellas, see if I've missed anything to tell you, and then I'll meet you back here in just a second. One last bed that I want to show you that we haven't touched on yet. Uh, we kind of breeze by it, so we're back here on to the right of the steps going up into the garden. Here we go. Now, you'll notice here we had to create um, a bed right here because there is a bed on the other side, but this has their fig tree. And Miss Sandra's husband had started this fig tree from a seedling i think from a, a cutting that someone had given him so he's very attached to this so that's why we left the fig tree you know miss sandra's husband wanted to keep this so we left that there and it does produce figs so that is the difference and of course we'll get that mulch and everything and make it nice look nice and neat but here repeating that same of uh, the sprinter box woods and then the fire chiefs and then of course the um, Euchre is down here. These are the Lemon Love. Lemon Love with that nice brighter color can take more sun. So they, all of this right here will be a nice semi evergreen as far as with the Euchres. And then the Fire Chiefs and the Sprinters, of course, will stay evergreen. Back up here on the next level of the garden, more of the Blood, Sweat and Tears Daylilies right here that will repeat and balance out what is on the left side of the steps as well. 
hydrangeas, 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 hydrangeas. We've got two puffer fishes right here. One has already, she has completely defoliated. Um, I am not worried about this hydrangea. To know if your hydrangea is, you know, still alive, you may look at that and go, well, my gosh, Jenny, y'all just planted a bunch of sticks and it's a dead hydrangea. No, nope, it's not because it is still nice and green and very bendy. So we're not worried about this guy at all. So a puffer fish here, and then there is the other puffer fish right here. Coming up the bank, you've got three bobos. Again, trying to repeat those and doing them in groups, multiples. So three bobos right here, and then Chinese, the snowball viburnums. There's four of those. Now, in long term, they are going to get some good height to them but that will kind of section off and give a little bit of privacy and secrecy to the garden in the back. This is where they are going to, you can see they've already filled in the mulch all around it, and then they're going to throw down some grass seed for this area. But those Chinese snowball viburnums, um, gorgeous early spring, and that will have that same kind of that hydrangea feel. Obviously it is a viburnum, it is not a hydrangea, the snowball bush. So a lot of people will call them snowball bushes very common name because it looks like a macrophylla hydrangea as far as the bloom. Color specific will be white and it's just a great um, plant to put in here. Again, we'll give it the height. So we work from low to high, give it the height right here and create a bit of a screen over here. So I think Jerry said that was the uh, last scoop of mulch. So I have a feeling they're going to be going back to the nursery and getting some more mulch because obviously there are still some areas that need to have mulch in here as well. Jerry's going to try to scrape up, <coughs> rough up, excuse me, this area so that he can put down some grass seed. One last area we're going to talk about is this section right here uh, close to the driveway. This is going to be the very last area that is done because it still needs to have the retaining wall finished over there. So I'm just gonna kind of show you the plants, show you the space and know that that's what's gonna happen in this area. Uh, all of this right here, so we talked about it before, right? Where Andrew is, he was saying that this area that needs to be done will probably be two courses because it's going to be higher obviously with the ground elevation right there it needs to um, the wall needs to be a little bit taller so that it will hold that soil back and then they're going to once the retaining wall is done and then the mulch is up there on the top to, to cover up that soil then they'll come in here and begin planting and we have a whole assortment of plants that will go in you can see jerry there is putting kind of starting to space out the sprinter boxwoods and we have the dianthus this is the paint the town fuchsia so paint the town fuchsia dianthus is going to go along the edge of the wall right here uh, bring some because these are semi evergreens for us and so bring in a little bit of bluish color to the garden nice and low fill in right here and will be quite lovely and in fact I just realized this tree right here is a sweet olive it's another tea olive right there because it is blooming so that gives her um, a whole nother tea olive so you can see exactly uh, the mature size of that and how she has trained it into be more like a tree instead of um, a sh like a shrub, like it could be evergreen all the way down and they decided to limit up. So if you have tea olives, there is an option for you that you could certainly do that. Uh, Sprinter box woods, obviously they're starting to put those out. They're not gonna drill those quite yet. Those are gonna go down. So you've got Sprinter box woods. You've got some Mahonia over here. You've got double play candy corn spirea, more Eucharas more hostas over there, more hydrangeas, fire chiefs, a whole assortment of things. And then Jackson has the power planter auger. That would be the, uh, the nine inch heavy duty tip because that is what they are using to plant these in the landscape because they're using, of course, the little bobcat has the bucket on it. So that is what they're doing with that. 
they have got to go get more mulch because they ran out of mulch and then they have to go pick up the rest of the stone for the wall over there. I am going to go make a lunch run because uh, these fellas need these fellas need sustenance they need food so I am going to go make a lunch run for them so we can feed them and they can finish out uh, today's project in this massive landscape project nice and strong and nobody gets hangry and nobody passes out from low blood sugar so we do not want that all right uh, I will try my best uh, to ask Jerry to do some final shots when everything is said and done um, I'm sure Miss Sandra would love for us to come back uh, in the spring when things are blooming and nice and full so we will hopefully be able to give you kind of a finished detail on this but just also keep in mind this is a working job site and these fellas are very uh, task oriented and want to get this done and uh, <laughs> the final video uh, scape may not come through we're going to keep our fingers crossed on that as well so as always we hope you have found this fun informative and inspirational and just know that uh, no matter what the age of your garden whether you, it is a brand new construction house or a house that has been here for 40 something years uh, gardening is always fun and exciting and changing and you can always at any point change something up if it's not working change it up appreciate you for gardening with creekside we'll see you on the next video Bye, friends.